Welcome, my name is Colleen Tauke and I'm the sewing specialist for Fonz and Porter. In this So Easy, we are going to talk about how to make bias strip piecing to create wonderful triangles. Okay, we've got a tool here that was designed by Marsh McCloskey and it's used to make um, sometimes feathered stars. It can be used in other ways too. Um, you'll notice as we look at it that it has a lot of markings, a lot of things to think about. Um, it's for using to make 54 different sizes of triangle squares. And you think 54, that's a lot. It's great when you're designing and you need some of those unusual or unique measurements because her tool is designed that it can cut down to the 16th. Now most of our rulers aren't marked for 16ths, so this is a great design tool. And what we're going to be doing today is you'll notice I've used some highlighter tape here and we're going to be trying to cut one and five eighths inch squares, just for example, so you can see what we're doing. So I've highlighted it here so that when we lay it on to our bias strip piecing we're going to be making that we can see exactly where to line things up. Okay, so we'll take this out for now and we'll get started at making our bias strip piecing. What we do is we start with two pieces of fabric for our triangle squares. And here I've got a light and a dark and we put them right sides together. Now, if you're following our directions, it will tell you what size to cut these squares. Um, I've marked them just so you can tell what I'm gonna be cutting. I'm going to be cutting two and a half inch wide segments off of it. So I've marked it just so I would remember where I'm cutting for you. And we go in and we are going to be cutting corner to corner and use a large ruler so that it makes it all the way across. Nice clean cut. And we'd back it up and cut every two inches as increments to create pieces off of this. And when I was first working on it, I thought, hmm, what's the usefulness of this? Well, you'll find out you can cut a lot of pieces really accurately and very quickly. So you would also proceed in the same manner cutting across the other side so that you would have these types of pieces. Now, if I take these out and we look at just half of them at a time, what we're going to do is we're gonna go in and we're going to seam these pieces together like this. We're gonna match the long edges. Like this, so we have points at top and bottom, all the way down, all the way to these little triangles out here. Okay, so we're going to join these as just strips and I'll show you some that I have ready. What that looks like. You will have units that look something like this. So you'll have two that are long like this and this is kind of the the order you're going to be joining these strips together and you'll have four the four different sizes. When you get to the end, it's going to be just triangle squares that look like these, and we are going to cut squares off of those also. But for now, we're going to put those aside, and we're going to join this together. We're going to put a seam here, between here, here, and here. What the idea is that you want to keep this to look like, kind of like a picket fence along the bottom. Once you have this all joined together, we have one I have one joined already, so you can see in our magazine you will find photographs that represent these exact pieces, and it looks like this now as one unit. Okay. The nice part about this is that you can cut every inch of it almost into triangle squares. Okay. And I've pressed seam allowances to one side in between rows. If you find that it's more helpful for you, you can also press those seam allowances open there too. But in the cutting of this, I'm going to turn it so it's a little bit easier for me to approach. And remember that tool with that um, little pink highlighter on there so we knew where we wanted to cut. Here we're going to cut, just for an example so you can see it, a 1 and 5 eighths inch square. Most of our rulers, it would be hard to find that 1 and 5 eighths. So this is where it comes in and is extremely helpful. Okay, on the tool it has a broken line on the diagonal from corner um, into the tool, so we are going to line that up 
right along the seam line between the dark and the light fabric. Take it all the way down into the corner, position it, and we're going to make our first triangle square for our project. The nice part about this is that they're going to be very precise when they're done. There's not going to be any distortion, and they will make our patchwork look wonderful. I'm going back now just to, sh to trim off the very lower edge where those little tails were so we can take that out and we have this really nice sweet little triangle square and we would then proceed along that edge oops get it in the right place that's why the highlighter tape is so great it keeps you on task and we can just go along and cut additional triangle squares again tr turning to trim the opposite side now, I've also had re, um, a couple of people ask me, well, if I just cut along these strips, what about the other areas? Well, those are also um, a dark and a light. They're usable. So we can come in and do a second row of triangle squares. We will have very little waste. And simply cut. And then, of course, you'll have to come back in and do your trimming from the opposite directions. But now if you were trying to make triangle squares like this by cutting the traditional triangles, can you imagine having to hold on to those little pieces under the presser foot? Doesn't seem like a lot of fun to me. So now we can create these precise um, triangle squares in up to 54 different sizes and use up the entire thing. For more of our So Easy videos, visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.